In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use Artcam Express just to create some fun Christmas parts. And I'm going to be using just the basic Artcam Express. If you take a look on the right hand side, you can see I have none of the modules installed there. This is just the £99, £125 Euros, or $149 version of the software. So what I'm going to do is just open this art file that I already have and as you can see I've created a 45 degree line and also two right angled lines there and what I'm going to show you is how to create a snowflake by creating vectors and manipulating them. So what I'm going to do is just select all of these vectors and I'm going to begin by offsetting those so I'm going to offset them by 15 millimeters I'm going to offset them both sides so it creates a ridge and I'm going to keep the corners sharp and I'm going to delete the original vectors so that will create that so it's created a closed shape for me and I can close my offset vectors now this time I'm going to use the block and rotate copy click on rotate copy the rotation center I'm going to use is 0, 0 and I'm going to do a total angle of 360 degrees and 8 objects so if I apply that you can see that that's rotated that around so starting to look a little bit like a snowflake now what I need to do though is to get rid of all these parts that are overlapping. I could do this by clicking here using the trim vectors tool but to be honest that would take me quite a long time as there are lots and lots of bits that I need to get rid of. Now the quick way to do this is to click here for weld vectors and if I click that you can see that that's automatically trimmed all of the parts off. So I have a nice looking snowflake at the moment. What I'm going to do now is to create a groove in this snowflake. So I'm going to create a line. So I'm just going to create a straight line. Centre that. Create another straight line. This time horizontal and centre that. And I'm going to select that uh, vertical line. And I'm going to offset that five millimeters this time both sides like so so there you can see I have a 10 millimeter slot there and the material that I'm going to use is 10 millimeters and I'm going to make two parts of these so the slot into each other and then I have a three-dimensional snowflake once it's cut out so I'm going to use the trim tool this time and I'm just going to trim all of the parts off here like so and there you can see I have a snowflake if I click on the outside vector of that you can see that this is an open contour I have a green and a red specifying that it's not closed what I want to do is to close this incorporating this groove so I'm just going to do that quickly by selecting all of the vectors and if I hover over here, hold the mouse button down and come down to join vectors just move this to the side here you can see it says there are number of vectors now are 12 and number of vectors after I join it is 9 so if I click join and click on the outside you can see that that's a closed vector now and it specifies that by a green box there so that's that part of the snowflake done just going to move this to the side for a moment here you can see I can move that anywhere if I press alt it gives me an angle snap of 90 degrees so I'm just going to move that to the side like so I'm going to press control and alt this time so this sets an angle snap and it also allows me to copy the part to the right there and I'm going to rotate this so I'll rotate it by 180 degrees just so I know that one of them is different so I know that that one fits into there and then that will create my snowflake 
So I'm going to centre that now and I'm going to machine this. So I'm going to create a profile cut. Just move this to the side so you can see. And it's going to be on the outside. I could do it along the vectors, the inside of the vectors or the outside of the vectors. I'm going to define my material which is going to be 10 millimeters thick as they need to slot into each other. And if you go to the 3D view, then you can see that that's set up my material block there. Go back to the 2D view. The finish depth, we'll do this 10.1 just to make sure that it cuts through the material. The profiling tool, I use a 6mm end mill for that. And click calculate now. Now if I close the profiling now and zoom in, you can see the red vectors specify the tool paths. So if you go into the 3D view, now you can see I have my tool paths within the 3D view. Now I can either right click on tool paths and click simulate or I could just click here and this will give me a simulation previewing where I'm about to cut. So there you can see my two snowflake parts and once this cut out I'll be able to assemble this Right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is to do much the same thing again, but this time I'm going to create vectors by using an image and vectorizing this. So I'm just going to open up this folder here, and here you can see I have an image of a Christmas tree. I'm just going to drag that into ArtCam, and I'm not going to save the changes. Here you can see that this has opened up that particular image, and what I'm going to do for this is to create a stencil so I can just get some snow and some spray it all over this Christmas tree just to create a nice little effect on the window for instance. So I'm going to go to image size and make this the size around about the size that I want this which is 100 millimeters. So there you can see that that's my Christmas tree. What I'm going to do is go to the bitmap to vector tool and click reduce colors which opens up another dialog box here with a slider bar. If you take a look at the bottom of the screen there are lots of different shades of colors here even though it's just white, green and red there are lots of different shades of red and green and also the white so what I need to do is slowly blend those into each other by dropping down the number of colors. So as you see, just dropping this down. If I drop it right down to two, it gets rid of all of the green and it's just a red and a white image. Now, I don't particularly want to create the vectors here. So what I'm going to do is bring it back up to three colors. So it brings the green back into the picture and click OK. I'm going to make sure that red is selected as my primary colour because I just want to create a vector where the red colour is. I'm going to leave the default values and click create vectors. If I click here, this adjusts the contrast slider bar so I can just wash the image out and if I just zoom in, let's say for instance here, you can see that that's given me quite a nice looking vector and it's not following all of these jagged pixels here it's given me a vector that I can use and I'm not going to edit this in any way I'm just going to machine this straight off so what I'm going to do now is to just add a little border around this because as you can see at the top it's a little bit thin up here and if I was to spray my snow on there it would go all over the window at the top here. So what I'm going to do is click here, wait for the drop down to come there and select here for add border. Now if you notice here you can see that this is a red color and it's just saying that the border is added to the image in current primary color so the current primary color is red as it tells me here so if I was to add a border now it would actually create a red border so I'm going to cancel that and select white as my primary color do the same thing again now you can see that that's changed to white so I'm going to create 
a symmetrical border of 50 and then OK that. So there you can see that that's added a border around my Christmas tree. What I'm going to do now is to create a rectangle and I'm going to specify sizes for this. It's going to be 150 by 175 and the center point is going to be 0, 0 and I'll create that. So this is my stencil now and it's ready to be cut out. So I'll go into toolpaths and again I'm going to use a profile toolpath and select my Christmas tree and this time it's going to be on the inside. Define the material so the material thickness, I'll do this out of 3mm thick material and the finish depth is going to be 3.1 the profiling tool use a 3mm end mill for this and click calculate now so there you can see that that's created the tool path on the inside of that vector close my profiling and select the outside rectangle go back to profiling do another profile uh, this is going to be along the outside set the depth and I'll use the same cutter for that click select and then calculate now now I can close the profiling and just simulate that and there you can see I have my finished stencil all ready to be cut out on the machine finally I'm going to show you how to do some 3D machining using Arkham Express so what I'm going to do is go to new model and I'm not going to save the changes just delete the material for the time being and I'm going to go into the 3D view I'm going to open up my relief clip art library now this is included within the basic Arkham Express the clip art library has over 500 pieces of reliefs that you can use within your particular designs and here you can see we have lots of animals lots of greenery for instance uh, signs objects so we have over 500 pieces of reliefs there and what I'm going to do is come down to these Christmas reliefs and here I have a tag so I'm going to select that and I'm going to just paste that straight in there close my clip art library and there you can see that that's imported a three dimensional relief now it's a little bit high at the moment for me I don't want it to be that high so what I'm going to do is click scale relief and this will allow me to drop down the height of this to let's say five millimeters click apply now you can see it's dropped the height down for me so what I'm going to do now is to do a 3D toolpath which is a machine relief toolpath just click on that move that to the right here and I can do this over the whole of the relief or using selected vectors as a boundary if I wished the finishing options use a 3mm ball nose cutter for this and for roughing I'll use a 16mm end mill define the material I'll just leave 0.1 on that so it doesn't cut through the base and then click calculate now so that's creating the roughing and then finally the finishing toolpath so there you can see the toolpaths which is this mass of red and what you can do with that is if you click here under this light bulb that will turn off the tool paths if I wish to just see the roughing for instance then you can see the roughing tool path just turn on that light bulb and then that just shows me that particular tool path now what I'm going to do is just simulate this so I can see what's happening before actually machining it so there you can see my simulated toolpaths and if I click on simulation and here under material I can change the material of this if I wished so let's say try light oak click apply 
and that looks fine. What I could do is to send this to, let's say, a customer or maybe a relative of this uh, little project that you're doing for someone. And what you could do is click Window and Save 3D View Image. Just call that Tag. Save this onto my desktop. And then if I switch to my desktop, here you can see my 3D PDF. So you can send that to anyone and they can download Adobe Acrobat for free and they can zoom in and rotate the part round, take a look at it. So it's quite a useful feature there. Go back to ArtCam and I'm going to show you how to save the toolpaths. So if you click on Save Toolpaths, here you can see the dialog box and what I could do is move both of the toolpaths over to the right hand side here and if I had a tool changer just select it from the list of post processors and then just save it. If I didn't have a tool changer I'll do one at a time so let's say for instance the roughing toolpath and here you can see all of the posts available to ArtCam there are over 300 posts available within ArtCam Express the basic version of Express you don't need anything else so we have 300 posts in there also have a generic G code which you could try if your machine wasn't listed under there quite a few people use that just to get the machine running and I'm just going to save this as a Mac free bit of G code save that onto my desktop and go back to my desktop and open this file and there you can see the G code ready to be sent to my machine so thanks for watching and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year bye